Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Little Nightmares. Uh, we're in kind of a problematic spot. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was told. Oh, that does work. That how far you throw something depends on how long you hold the button down. <laughs> it's not just Six's baby arms that were causing some throws to come up short. Uh, where am I actually going in here? Oh yeah, we're in we're in kind of a problematic spot because I thought that we had escaped the chefs, that we were done with them, we were moving on to only the passengers. Uh we have the passengers and the chefs, which Oh, so I'm gonna get up there. So can I climb this? No, I can't grab onto it. All of these noises being distorted by the acoustics in this bathroom really kind of getting to me. <laughs> Why would that work? Of course not. Can I get up to the doorknob? Because otherwise I'm kind of trapped in here. That's weird. I was trying to throw the toilet paper in the toilet. <laughs> Did that? Yeah, that totally auto-locked on like it does with the buttons. Uh, for the elevators, so I wonder. Hey! We noodled it out. That's kind of cool. Because they put you in a room with a limited number of things that you can potentially interact with, so eventually you'll come to that conclusion. That's, that's cool. I wonder if this means that the janitors are also going to be back, because they've been by far the creepiest enemy so far. The chefs, too. Oh, yeah, and we have this statue here. I've seen pe a few people trying to argue that it's that they aren't wearing any kind of masks. But there are definitely animations like where you can see them reaching under their chins to to like scratch and like lifting something up and it's not just folds of skin. There are just really unpleasant noises on all sides. Left and right. Like that husky breathing coming from the left is is real bad. Guess that must be the sound of the guests eating behind the, the door. Oh, Fuck, I think I was way too slow. I hesitated for a second. Well... Well, at least I was right. They were eating behind that door. <laughs> Shit. So again, the main deal with the guests seems to be just go, just hit the gas. Just put the Nikes on and go. Six, you need some little Nikes for your little feet. Just haul that ass. Just haul ass through here. Oh shit! Oh, that kind of sucks. You can you can feel the hitboxes being kind of screwy. When something like that happens, that's okay. Still, I hesitate if we're just that split second, so that is partially my fault. You definitely seem to get more distance from that jump. Like, you, you really accelerate at the start of it.
The noise is getting more cacophonous. It's getting way more unsettling. Oh. That's strong, that chase. That builds, like... The music and the chase itself builds to this really unnerving crescendo. Oh, not this again. What did I eat last time? I think it was... The last time it was the rat. Why do I get the feeling that the game is gonna end... With no food? Like, the last time this happens, I'm, there's gonna be no food in sight, and I'm just gonna collapse, and credits are gonna roll. Oh, the cute little gnome friend! Roll me sausage! Hell yeah. These things are the fucking best. What? What? Oh, God. Uh, Jesus. Oh, wow, that's really obvious. That's, yeah, that's totally a statue of her. So, what is this all leading? What the fuck? I'm trying to make sense of that. Wow, I... Oh. That's an excellent bait and switch. That is an expertly crafted moment to produce shock. Damn, that is... I'm fucking speechless. Okay. This... This feels way, way, way too... Straightforward right now. Oh, some of the paintings are covered. Also, we're seeing a couple of repeat ones. I'm trying to make out what that one is. The one with all of the figures crowded around. Then there are the eye ones we've seen before. The portrait of the maw itself. Is that the woman singing? Uh-huh. So I... What is her gimmick? The mirror is broken. Maybe the sound of her singing is gonna mask the creaky floorboards. They're not really creaking that much. Also, there's a, there's a statue on her dresser. I wonder if that's a light motif of another song we've heard in the game. 
I want to go back and listen to some music uh, to uh, some of the other music in the game and see if that ties into anything. I had derived some thematic meaning from that, cause I'm I'm still caught up on devouring the fucking gnome. There's oh, there's more covered portraits in here. And there's one that looks like a portrait of six. Huh. I... Why didn't she come in here to investigate? This is all giving me a really bad vibe. Like, this seems way too straightforward, right? I feel like I'm being set up. Uh, also, something else to note. I wonder if there's a connection between the fact that I just a couple of minutes ago broke a mirror, and that's the only interaction we've had with mirrors in the whole game up till now. And she's combing her hair in front of broken mirrors, and she has all these covered up portraits. Whoops. Don't want to throw that away. That's that's interesting. Uh, Shruggerna in the comments uh, posted last episode that what he knows about Tengu, remember you can get the Tengu mask for six. One of the things that he knows about Tengu uh, is that they are, I'm quoting, oh, hello? It's a room full of broken mirrors. Damn. Uh, Tengu are, are slayers of vanity. Okay. Uh, also to everyone who's been saying that this is giving them uh, spirited away vibes. On top of this being inspired partially by uh, the City of Lost Children with uh, Ron Perlman, the other major influence on this game that I know of Oh, shit. One of these is actually going to be her, and she's going to become active. Uh, the other major influence of the, on this game uh, were Ghibli movies. So now we have all these emerging themes about vanity. That, hmm. And she wears a mask. Can I climb these? Hell yeah. So, covered painting, she wears a mask, she breaks all of the mirrors. She's obsessed with vanity, but ashamed of herself? Wait, is this mirror intact? Oh! And we're gonna use this to fight her. She can't stand the sight of herself. That's why all the mirrors are broken. Except this one? Why is this one intact? Shit. I noticed the light to the left side of the room too late. I guess I'm supposed to make a dash for that. Is this a light reflecting thing? Oh no! Don't break that! No, it's not a light reflecting thing, it's just... There is no... Yeah, you can't show her reflection in pitch black. This is very final. Because this is the only direct confrontation. This is also the most supernatural things have gotten. Because she's just straight teleporting. 
Uh, also, she lifted me into the air with some kind of force choke. <laughs> Everything else has been kind of surreal and eerie, but this is just, yeah, this is magic. This is just straight magic. Okay, so I am doing this right. We've just now changed to a different phase. This doesn't seem... The hardest thing about this is... Locating where the next spotlight is gonna be. I'm still curious about why there was an intact mirror sitting on a throw pillow. Whenever... Like, even the mirrors... In, the other mirrors in that room were shattered. So why was there one intact? Just big enough for six? Uh... Makes me think that it was left there intentionally. For six. Holy shit! Holy shit, no way. She's eating her. Then she's gonna eat me. Oh my god. Oh my god.
That was really good. Oh, man. That was really good. Was that humming music the same melody that the lady was humming? Also, that black smoke effect, we've seen that a bunch of times in the game. Uh, you see it when you smash the statues of the lady, uh, when you get petrified by the eye sentries. I think when she killed me during that fight we saw it, when she force choked me. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to piece things together. I want to replay the beginning. Like the first hour from the Halloween stream. Because I, I let a lot of time pass between that and uh, recording the second episode. But I'm trying to piece stuff together. The gears are turning. Uh, so six. At first, I... I thought Six was a designation from her captors to, to kind of strip away her humanity. And that might still be the case. Uh, that's often something that you see in association with uh, atrocities, is perpetrators referring to victims uh, in terms of... Uh, in, in terms designed to distance themselves from committing cruelty to other humans. So they'll refer to them as, as cockroaches or rats or, or animals. So I thought six was just given a number to make it easier for the people who run the maw to go about their work guilt-free. But maybe it has something to do with like a line of succession. Because <laughs> this is what I, my line of thought is. Uh, Six has been gradually led down this path of consuming bigger and more sentient things. So she goes from... Uh, I think the, the kid in the beginning gives her just a, a piece of bread. And you go from that to the trapped rat uh, to the poor gnome fully alive, seemingly sentient thing. Well, I mean the rat's trapped, but the the gnome is is given like these cutesy, more humanoid qualities. And it's it's giving you something that you could eat instead of it. With the rat, it's a desperation thing. But you go from from the piece of bread to the rat to the gnome. That makes me feel like she's being groomed to get ready to eat the woman at the end. Like there's a clear, visible progression there. And that makes me think that she was being groomed to eat the lady and to then succeed her. Which would make her not sixth in name, but like sixth in the line of, I guess, Wardens of the Maw. Uh, as for the gnomes, right now I'm still a little bit uncertain as to what to think about them. Like, what their function is, or what they represent. There's still, there's a lot of stuff that I want to go back through, because this game does so much with its environments. And, and implying uh, narrative threads through them. Like, we got... I, I feel like the end of that really tied a lot together and brought a lot to bear, especially with all the broken mirrors, the covered paintings, all of that stuff. This is, uh... This is an excellent debut from, uh, this studio, from Tarsier. They, before this, the only thing that they had done was the uh, Vita port for Little Big Planet. And they even got uh, some of the Little Big Planet level design community members in to uh, help design this game. So, kudos. This is. This has been absolutely excellent. Um, everything about it, I, I can't really fault anything. 
Also, listen to this sweet little jingle. It sounds like a lullaby. There is a little bit more to come. Actually, there's quite a bit more as far as transmedia stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but there's DLC for this game. Uh, and it follows a different character. It follows uh, a, a kid who may be the same kid, I'm not sure, who gives uh, Six the piece of bread from behind the bars. I know that the DLC is episodic and that the first two pieces of the DLC are out currently. Uh, and I think the last one comes out from what I heard in January. So that's when we're going to pick those back up. Uh, we're going to come back to Little Nightmares. We're going to come back to this. But we're going to do it once all the DLCs are out. Aside from that, there's a comic or a forthcoming comic and also uh, some kind of series in the works. Uh, I think a TV series from the director of, of Coraline, which is... Kind of funny, because of the similarity with the yellow raincoats. Ooh, I like how this, this track has morphed a little bit. Ooh. I really like this game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some more thought into this and some more time and research and, and kind of puzzle things out. There have been a lot of excellent moments throughout this game, and it's short and sweet. It gets across exactly what it needs to. It does not waste any time. That's so, so nice. Really disturbing at times, too. Uh, so, that's going to do it for me. Uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe. I read all of the comments. I try to respond whenever I have time, uh, and I respond quite often. So, yeah, remember, like, comment, subscribe, it helps me out. And if you want to go a little bit further than that, you can find my Patreon link, my tip jar, uh, my social media stuff, my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash scribed. I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, on top of uploading uh, videos daily. Uh, and you can check my Twitter out at twitter.com slash thescribed, same as the YouTube channel. And also Patreon, patreon.com slash spray. That is going to do it for Little Nightmares. We're going to have to find something else to take this game's spot. I'm sure we'll find something. <laughs> That's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one. Let's see if there's a stinger. Okay. I was I was waiting and getting ready for it to rise up out of the sea. Some sort of huge ocean dwelling beast. Alright. Take it easy, y'all.